Beneath the surface of a woodland stream lies a world full of secrets. Oh, check this out. Crayfish. This little devil crayfish might not look like much, but this is one of my favorite things to find out in a stream. Unlike regular crayfish, these guys are actually subterranean, semi-terrestrial. They can build burrows and things, and it's super cool to see them because they almost never come to the surface. He has an absolutely alien appearance. All those legs, those huge claws, and what I love about devil crayfish is they have these red pincers. The tips of their claws are red, and they get their name devil crayfish from that red patterning. They're red devils that hide beneath the surface and they're actually really important to the world that lives beneath the surface of the water. Because most people don't associate them with a healthy ecosystem. They think of them as these dirty creatures that live in the mud, mud bugs. But it turns out these guys are actually incredibly sensitive. The mud needs to be actually clean. Slightest amount of pollutants will kill them. The slightest change in pH will actually begin to dissolve their exoskeleton. This little creepy crustacean is actually the key to an aquatic ecosystem's biodiversity. And freshwater ecosystems are the key the survival of life on this planet. Welcome to the secret world of a woodland stream. Less than 2% of the Earth's water is the kind that you and I need to survive. Liquid fresh water. On the surface, freshwater travels in streams, which range from giant rivers to the little forest creeks we grow up catching crayfish in. A woodland stream is like the circulatory system of a forest. The running water refreshes the landscape and deposits nutrients to all those who live around it. Many of the forest creatures make use of a stream for water and for food. You can barely see them, but right there, that is a baby water snake. Look at that. Let me see if I can actually get him before he disappears. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Come here, buddy. Oh, he's mad. This is a perfect example of some of the more vertebrate life that, ooh, lives out here in the woodland stream. See that? He just tried to take out my face. Unfortunately, he is the size of an actual noodle, so he cannot reach my face from all the way in my hand, but he is super super agitated look at that he may be small but he's loaded with muscle and i can feel that he is just spring loaded for another strike i bring my face too close he'll try and bite my nose probably won't feel like much because he is absolutely tiny but he is definitely gonna put up a show for it water snakes are non-venomous the guy if this guy bites you it will hurt and trust me when i say water snakes do love to bite but this guy will not be super bad now he does have a mild anticoagulant in his saliva. It's not a venom, it just kind of prevents your blood from clotting. And that's super convenient for him when he's hunting out here because this guy is absolutely tiny. Fish and frogs, to him, are quite a giant meal. And if one of them decides to fight back, he could be in trouble. So biting, breaking their skin, and causing them to bleed out in the water means they're gonna be pretty weakened when he actually starts to feed, giving him the upper hand. I would imagine, He'd be taking down small Ooh. I'd imagine he'd be taking down small minnows, tadpoles, possibly small invertebrates at this size. I'm not entirely sure if, uh, if a water snake will go after an invertebrate or not. Usually they're fish and frog specialists, but I imagine at his size, he's got to basically eat anything he can overpower. And let me tell you, this creek, it may be small, it may be peaceful, when I say there's all kinds of weird things in here that are trying to overpower each other, oh boy. This is where he was going, so let's put him back in here and wish you the best of luck. It's nice and muddy today, so he will have no problem disappearing. Watch, there he goes, boom, and he vanishes. For many of the animals in a stream ecosystem, it's more than just a means to an end. The stream is a way of life. The nutrients and the life they give rise to make a waterway an attractive habitat for many aquatic life forms. But how does a tiny little creek in the middle of the woods support so many different creatures? The answer lies in the water. It looks clear at first glance, but a closer look reveals that in even just a drop of stream water, thousands of microscopic life forms are engaging in a complex battle for survival. Algae and zooplankton swim about, living lives completely hidden to the naked eye. 
These innumerable microbes serve as the bottom layer of the stream food web, being easy snacks for crayfish and other invertebrates that swim in these waters. And these invertebrates are food for larger animals, the amphibians. Check this out, a little green frog. These guys are one of the North American water frogs, one of the most common amphibians you can find out in the stream. Now these guys might look like reptiles, you know, got greenish skin, four limbs, stuff like that, but they're actually more closely related to fish. And many amphibians don't even have lungs, which means they need a different way of respiring to get their oxygen. What's actually true about most amphibians is their skin is super, super permeable. They, they absorb their oxygen, they absorb water, all through their skin, which makes amphibians super sensitive. One of the biggest tells of a healthy ecosystem is a large amount and a large diversity of amphibians. We got tons of these little frogs out here. Finding some good frog diversity is always a good sign that a local habitat might be healthy. The stream's habitat is not confined to the water. High water tables nearby mean the moist soil around the water's edge can support aquatic life and cover objects scattered near the edge of a creek give shelter to creatures normally not seen near the surface. All right. Oh, yes. Come here. Oh, look at that. Now this is a slimy salamander, which is weird because touch him, he's actually not that slimy. But this guy is one heck of a cool salamander. Have a look at his patterning, dark, grayish blue salamander, almost like a bluish dusky. Gotta keep my hands moist because salamanders are amphibians. And these guys are particularly sensitive amphibians. There's lots of frogs and stuff in the stream, but the salamanders are the true, true markers of a healthy ecosystem. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the first time I've been able to get a hand on this salamander, but I've been actually tracking him out here for a long time. The reason I knew this brick was gonna host him is this will be the fourth time I've flipped the brick and seen him underneath, but generally, generally he disappears down a burrow and I can't actually get up close and personal with him. These slimy salamanders are incredibly, incredibly territorial. It's highly unlikely that another salamander individual is lurking in this exact vicinity because slimy salamanders, especially males, will defend their territory super, super violently. These guys are usually pretty fossorial. A slimy salamander, like any other salamander, very sensitive to dry, very sensitive to heat. And one of these guys would dry out in the sun really easily. Slimy salamanders are a lungless species of salamander. That means they breathe through their skin. They get all of their oxygen through diffusion through the membrane of their skin, which means that he'll be very sensitive to a lot of chemicals and stuff in this local environment. Now I've found, I've found stoneflies, I've found helgramites, which are also very sensitive species out here. But this guy is a crown jewel of this local ecosystem. This guy, given his size and given the fact that slimy salamanders take a few years to reach maturity, and this is a very mature salamander if you're looking at him, I don't know how old this salamander is, but he's at least a few years. And given their territorial nature, this guy has been lurking out here next to the creek probably for years, going completely undetected. And what's crazy is he had to come from somewhere. So I know just by him being here, there's a population of slimy salamanders in this general area, which is kind of crazy. These aquatic ecosystems and their surrounding environments can host a huge treasure trove of incredible, incredible secrets, just like this slimy salamander. Waterways chock full of life like this are becoming increasingly rare. Pollution and commercial habitat destruction encroach on some of the most sensitive animals that call these habitats home. Some of the most obscure, but yet most exciting creatures are beginning to disappear from the face of the earth. Salamander. Took me a minute to see him. This little dwarf salamander. Have a look at this. This is a dwarf salamander. Now you might be wondering, Spencer, we just saw a giant slimy salamander. Why is this tiny little shrimp more important than that huge 
cool looking salamander, and let me tell you why. This guy may be tiny and unassuming, but like the slimy salamander, he's a lungless salamander. And all of them pretty much keep a pretty compact size. The slimy was big, but it was very slender and skinny, and that's because they want to optimize their surface area to volume ratio. And that's because without lungs and without gills, they need some way to get oxygen to their body, and they actually diffuse all their oxygen to their skin. That means their skin is super permeable. And for a salamander this size, while a slimy salamander or a dusky salamander might be able to withstand a bit more pollution, the same dosage of toxins in the environment, which can diffuse into this guy's skin, just like any other amphibian, would be lethal. As a result of that, these guys are actually a super great indicator of a healthy environment. And this local stream actually happens to have a very healthy population of these guys. That is not the norm. Here in North Carolina and across most of the salamander's range, they're threatened with habitat destruction. These guys are losing the precious waterways that they need to survive. Clean, pristine water systems, free of pollution, are becoming more and more rare. And as a result, this guy's population is on decline. I'm handling him inside this case simply because his tiny size means that any chemicals, soap, residue from other animals I've handled on this adventure, anything could be toxic to this guy and I want to make sure that his health is prioritized. It's the delicate balance of this entire stream ecosystem, the entire secret world that exists beneath the surface of the water that allows this rare salamander to exist and thrive here in healthy numbers. But more and more, these guys are disappearing from the planet and that is an absolute shame. So what can we actually do to prevent these beautiful animals from disappearing from our planet forever? Here on this channel, one of the biggest reasons I actually encourage people to get up close and personal with wildlife is the best way to learn about them is to actually experience them for yourself. The best way to protect a stream is to start interacting with it in a sensible and respectful way. As long as you're careful to leave everything the way you found it and be gentle with the animals you do find, getting out into a stream in your backyard, in your local area, and spreading the word about creatures you find there is the best way that you can help save these freshwater ecosystems. Don't forget to check out this video on how to find and catch frogs in a stream to help you find all kinds of cool animals while you're out. And as always, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.